نواب خواجہ ناظم الدین وار ا ٹرو کمپینین آف قائد اعظم ہی واز دا سیکنڈ گورنر جنرل آف پاکستان اینڈ سیکنڈ پرائم منسٹر آف پاکستان آن فورٹین سپتمبر نائنٹین فورٹی ایٹ تھری ڈیز آفٹر دا ڈیتھ آف دا قائد خواجہ ناظم الدین بی کھیم دا نیو گورنر جنرل آف پاکستان ناظم الدین واز لیڈر آف دا مسلم لیگ ایٹ دا ٹائم اینڈ واز آلسو چیف منسٹر آف ایسٹ پاکستان ہی واز ریسپیکٹڈ ایز این ہونیسٹ اینڈ ٹیلنٹیڈ پولیٹیشین پرائم منسٹر خان ریمینڈ ان آفس سم آف ٹائم خواجہ ناظم الدین کوکلی ریلائزڈ دیٹ لیاقت علی خان ہیڈ دا کانفیڈنس آف دا گورنمنٹ ایڈمنسٹریٹرز اینڈ پیپل آف پاکستان ہو بلیو ان ہم پیپل لکڈ اپ ٹو ہم بیکاز ہی واز اے کلوز ایسوسیٹ اینڈ اے موسٹ ٹورسٹڈ کمپینین آف قائد اعظم ناظم الدین دیر فور اسٹڈ بیک اینڈ الاؤڈ لیاقت علی خان ٹو رن دا کنٹری دا رول آف دا گورنر جنرل بی کیم لیس امپورٹنٹ دین دا پرائم منسٹر آف پاکستان ون آف دا فرسٹ ٹاسک وچ لیاقت علی خان ہیڈ ٹو ایڈریس واز اسٹیبلشنگ اے کانسٹیٹیوشن وچ وڈ سیٹسفائی دا ڈفرنٹ گروپس ود ان دا پاکستان فرسٹ ڈرافٹ واز دا آبجیکٹو ریزولوشن سنس ایٹین ففٹی سیون دا سب کانٹیننٹ ہیڈ بین کمپلیٹلی انڈر دا کنٹرول آف دا برٹش کرون ویریس ایکٹس آف پارلیمنٹ ور پاسٹ سیٹنگ آؤٹ ہاؤ انڈیا واز ٹو بی گورنڈ دا فائنل ایکٹ آف دا گورنمنٹ آف انڈیا ایکٹ واز نائنٹین تھرٹی فائیو انڈیا شوڈ بی گورنڈ ایز دیر وڈ بی اے گورنر جنرل رپورٹنگ ٹو دا برٹش سیکرٹری آف اسٹیٹ فار انڈیا ان لندن دا گورنر جنرل وڈ بی ایڈوائزڈ بائی این ایگزیکٹو کونسل اینڈ ہیو وائٹ پاورز اوور اسپیکٹس آف گورنمنٹ ان انڈیا دیر وڈ آلسو بی ٹو ہاؤسز آف پارلیمنٹ ایٹ پروینشل لیول دیر وڈ بی پروینشل گورنرز پروینشل اسمبلیز اینڈ پروینشل منسٹرز After independence in 1947, Pakistan was ruled under the Indian Independence Act, which was an amended version of the Government of India Act. A constituent assembly was set up to frame a new constitution, but until it reported the Governor General would have control over the entire field of government activity. But under the control of the cabinet, however, as Pakistan lacked well-organized political parties and a prime minister with a stable majority in the legislature. It also lacked an effective cabinet, so the governor general became a much more important office, particularly that it was held by the Qaeda. The Constituent Assembly had set up a basic principles committee to decide the principles on which the new constitution should be based. It had 25 members, about a third of the Assembly. Its findings were contained in a document called the Objectives Resolution, which was passed on 12 March 1949. It declared the constitution should observe the principles of democracy, freedom, equality, tolerance, and social justice alerted by Islam. Muslims would be able to lead their lives according to Islamic principles. Other religious groups should be able to practice their religion freely. Minorities and the poor would be legally protected from social injustice. All fundamental human rights should be granted. The legal system should be independent of government. The objectives resolution contains several references to Islam as it tried to counter criticism from the ulama that the new government had not made Pakistan a proper Islamic state with a constitution based on the Sharia. 
Also, there was no time scale set down for completing the constitution, nor for holding the first election, or indeed any agreement on how to make sure the objectives were made. They did not form the basis for the draft constitution presented to assembly by the Basic Principles Committee on 28 September 1950. The committee recommended by Cameron legislature with equal powers the president was to be elected by the joint session of the two houses. It suggested that Urdu should be the official language of Pakistan. The proposals came in for much criticism by the East Pakistan as well as something from West Pakistan. East Pakistan had a much larger population than West Pakistan and resented the idea of equal representation in the National Assembly. The East Pakistanis also resented having to accept Urdu as the official language at the expense of Bengali. Provincial politicians objected to the power being given to the head of the state and to the federal government. Religious groups complained that the constitution was not sufficiently Islamic. Prime Minister Liaquat Ali Khan decided that since there was so much criticism of the proposals, they should be given further consideration. His untimely death meant that constitution change had to wait until a new leader was found and had to time to settle it. During the time of Khwaja Nazimuddin's governor generalship, several other important measures were taken. But Khwaja Nazimuddin did not interfere any progress and process of government to produce any activity to make constitution and other social and public activities. There was another major progress was to develop a act public and representative officer disqualification act which was known as PRODA. This act showed that Pakistan had yet to become the free democratic country that the Qaid had envisioned. It was subtitled an act for the debarring from public office for a suitable period of person judiciary, found guilty of misconduct in any public office or any representative capacity in any matter therein. By these acts, complaints could be made to the Governor General or provincial governors who could order an inquiry by judges. Anyone found guilty under PRODA was debarred from office. The law was designed to eliminate corruption, but in reality, it allowed the ruling elite to remove those who did not approve of their wishes. The problem of refugees In August 1947, the Qaeda had called the refuge problem in Pakistan's grave emergency and had set the Central Refuge Council to deal with it. Liaquat Ali Khan met with the Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru and signed the Liaquat Nehru Pact. It was agreed that each government was responsible for the safety of minority groups within its borders. Free passage of refugees across the border was restricted and a visa system for refuge was introduced. Another issue was the settlement of Hyderabad and Kashmir. On 17 September 1948, while Pakistan was still coming to terms with the death of the Qaeda, India invaded Hyderabad on 5 January 1948. The United Nations Organization organized a ceasefire between India and Pakistan in Kashmir. However, there was no agreement over the future of Kashmir, so tensions looked like in time to come. In January 1951, Sir Douglas Gracie, the British Commander-in-Chief of the Pakistan Army, was replaced by General Ayub Khan, a Pakistani partition. 
Many army officers had complained about the presence of the British in senior position. By 1951, most army officers were Pakistani. Despite this, some army officers, unhappy with the government, began to plan a coup to take over the government. In March 1951, this Rawalpindi conspiracy was discovered by Ayub Khan, and the conspirators were arrested, tried, and imprisoned. Amongst them was Major General Akbar Khan, Chief of General Staff, and 14 other officers. Lakhat Ali Khan had survived his first coup, but his success was to be short-lived. He was shot dead by an assassin on 16 October 1951 while addressing a public meeting in Rawalpindi. He had worked tirelessly for the country and was a popular leader. The government gave him the title of Shahid Millat, a martyr for the cause of the nation. After it, the Khwaja Nazimuddin took the post of the Prime Minister. Khwaja Nazimuddin served the post of Governor General as neutral and he remained behind the scene. He promoted the activities of Liaquat Ali Khan and the era of Governor General as Liaquat Ali Khan said was an example of the neutral policy of any president or Governor General by Pakistan.